we'll go ahead and turn it over to our product team to talk to us about the roadmap. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I believe I'm up first here. So um, we have the roadmap split out into uh, a couple of different areas of focus. Um, I'm Micah, the, uh, one of the product managers here at Bitwarden, and my area of focus here is up at the top, Vault Experience and Community. Um, so uh, hopefully some of you have seen our post about this on the community forums. If not, uh, it's there for you to check out and we make updates to that periodically. But for Vault Experience and Community, for the first half of the year, um, what we're going to be looking at uh, is expanding the passwordless login options. So at the end of last year, we were able to um, bring that new login with device feature to the Web Vault. Um, we're going to be bringing that experience to uh, the other clients, so browser, desktop, mobile, um, and also expanding the devices you can approve login on to include um, the desktop app. Uh, so that is something you can look forward to. Um, we're also going to be looking at vault item sharing. So we already allow sharing between members of organizations using Bitwarden collections. Um, but sometimes you need to share something with someone who is not a part of your organization. Uh, sometimes you might want to share something and not have that person receive updates so that you can change the password and they won't get the new password. Um, and for that, we're going to be creating uh, uh, sharing items using send. So qu qu quickly creating a send that contains all of the uh, vault item information. Um, we're also going to be looking at creating custom item types. Um, this is because we have so many users who have you know, a diversity of use cases. Um, we just can't serve everybody by adding new types to the vault. And so we want to uh, allow users to build out the types that best suit their needs. Um, and save information in their vault the way that they want to. Enhanced localization here. This is uh, mostly focusing on improving the quality of life for our community translators. If you didn't know, Bitwarden is translated into over 40 languages, and that's all done by volunteers in our community. Um, we're super grateful for them. And enhanced localization here um, really is focusing on making their work easier um, so that Bitwarden can be translated into additional languages or more easily translated. Then vault item labels, this is a refactor of uh, the current folders structure so that um, there's a little bit less confusion between folders and collections, um, and also makes it easier for users to organize their vault items the way that they want to. And then account switching, um, we have account switching on our uh, mobile app, on our desktop app, and we want to bring this to the browser extension as well to make it easy to switch between, say, your work Bitwarden and your personal Bitwarden um, when you're browsing the web. And then in the future, um, we have here some uh, items that product and product design are researching and looking into. Um, so you may see these on the roadmap in the future. These include passkey support. So last year, Apple, Google um, sort of released their version of uh, a passkey technology for passwordless authentication. I um, mean, we want to make, uh, uh, we want to enable Bitwarden to support uh, similar functionality and sync passkeys between devices. Referrals. Um, we are super grateful for uh, our community members always referring Bitwarden to their friends and family and to their places of work. And we want to um, build out systems to make that easier to do um, just from the product. A notification center or uh, to allow our users to manage their notification preferences so that they're always aware of important security events um, and maybe even uh, you know product updates as they occur. Offline editing has been an ask from our community for a long time to be able to edit items um, when you are not uh, and save new items. So you can always access your vault when you're offline, um, but you're not able currently to uh, add new items or make changes to items um, when you're offline. And so this would include the ability to do those things. And then uh, we, we want to keep focusing on the desktop app. We think that there's more functionality we can bring to that um, to bring it closer in line with the functionality that you have uh, on the web vault. That is it for the Vault experience in community. I'll hand it over now to Priya. Thanks, Micah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Priya, and I'm also a product manager here um, focused on our enterprise and channel customers. So I'll be going through the next two sections. So starting with Bitwarden for business, um, first up, we have the Navigation Vault Refresh, and this is a multi-phase project. So Coming very soon, we have some improvements for our organizational vault, which will improve and kind of make the relationship between um, members, groups, and collections more intuitive. And then later on, we will be making more improvements to both the end user and organizational vault, um, which will make also like the navigation and the overall UI more um, sleeker and intuitive as well. With Collection permissions, we're going to focus on making collections more self-serve. 
So um, allowing users to manage and create their own collections and taking some of that responsibility off the owners and admins if they um, decide to do so. And with account management and deprovisioning, this is providing owners and admins more uh, control over their members' accounts uh, across the full lifecycle from uh, creation to deletion. And then with organization dashboards, um, this will provide more visuals as well as a more consolidated view of the or of your organization's vault health. So um, this includes, like I said, a consolidated view of the different reports as well as providing ways to action on those insights um, quickly. And then with onboarding optimizations, we're looking at ways to improve um, onboarding both for our end users as well as um, our admins and owners. So for our end users, getting them to kind of those light bulb moments to understand the uh, value of a password manager and for admins and, and owners, um, giving them more of that onboarding experience and setting up the organization and doing their initial uh, configurations and integrations. And then with expanded enterprise policies, um, with this, we'll be introducing new policies based on the feedback that we've gotten from our customers, as well as expanding existing ones. So that includes you know, ways to maybe apply certain policies to certain groups or changing requirements based on the groups you have in your organization. And then moving on to future initiatives, um, we also have planned custom role enhancements. So this includes introducing new custom permissions as well as providing ways to save those custom roles so that you can apply those roles to multiple members. And then we have SSO enhancements, which will, you, you know, we have SSO today, but we're looking at ways to improve the SSO login flow. So that includes things around our organization identifier, as well as um, the master password requirement. And we're also looking at ways to provide more SSO options to our owners and admins. And then from here, we have a few integrations planned. So one is SIM, which uh, takes our Bitward and event logs to a broader uh, dashboard and platform that provides more insights to organizations on you know, specific security risks and vulnerabilities. Um, we have MDM integrations that'll support also initial configuration and setup and provide a more secure way for organizations to manage their mobile devices. And then lastly, technology integrations. Um, this is more of a broader research bucket on additional integrations that we're looking into. So this includes additional uh, security alerting as well as ways to get notifications on certain events, you know, such as like Slack or Teams. And then moving on from uh, Bitwarden for Business, uh, I'll talk through ways that we're helping our MSPs and reseller scale. And with this, I'll kind of go through the, the main themes here. So one is focused on billing. So we'll be helping um, our resellers kind of improve their workflow and ways to manage their customers. And also with professional service uh, automation integrations and client invoice updates, we'll be, we'll be improving the billing experience for our uh, providers. The other main theme is around roles and permissions. So between technician assignment to clients, as well as additional technician roles, we'll be providing um, more permissions within the provider portal, as well as uh, providing more granularity on how those provider users are assigned to their clients within the provider portal. And then for the last two items in the future initiatives, we have remote monitoring and management integrations, which providers use to kind of manage the initial setup of their um, clients Bitwarden instance, as well as kind of the ongoing support and maintenance. And then lastly, client procedure documentation, which um, really just helps providers uh, note, th note down certain procedures and implementation uh, notes around their client's implementation. So um, that's all for uh, business and MSPs and resellers. So I'll hand it off to um, Casey to talk through Secrets Manager. Yeah, thank you. So the last point um, in this chart is increasing developer productivity. Um, so in 2023, we are um, planning on launching Secrets Manager, which will um, enable developers to um, transmit and share and secure uh, developer secrets. 
So um, if you're interested in trying out this beta when it's released, um, you can find, sign up for the beta waitlist at bitwarden.com slash secrets beta, or you can just find it on our uh, community forums. So really excited about this new product. Um, and you know, hopefully you'll give it a shot. <laughs>